Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Good morning. It's nice to know you're all here. Hi, Margaret. Hope you're well. And Yolaine. Hi, Yolaine. Nice to see your face. Jackie, good morning. And who else? There's Jenny, Melina, Bridget, Ting. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. Megan, Frankie, um, I hope you're well. Catherine, Amanda, um, I hope everyone's having a beautiful day. <laughs> be on camera or not, um, but uh, we're very grateful that you're, you're here with us this morning. Absolutely. Uh, I was laughing, Sean, because did any, if any of you remember Romper Room, <laughs> She used to be like, good morning, and say each person's name. And it just reminded me of that. <laughs> I've been accused of that before. It's so funny you said that. Someone else has said the whole rock room thing. So. <laughs> That's my, my inspiration. Mark, yeah. enjoy your breakfast. Cheers to you. Here's a cup of tea. Good morning. Good morning. Just taking a moment while people are coming on. We are thrilled. Hi, R-Dub. We are thrilled that you have joined us this morning um, to have a conversation about this upcoming six month journey, which has been such a dream of ours. And we wanna begin with a grounding. So I'm gonna invite you to um, uh, just take a moment, bring your hands to your own body and feel for your breath and feel for the soles of your feet really just anchoring right now into this moment, into an acknowledgement of your willingness to be here with whatever questions or inquiries you have about this program. Noticing that this program is happening at a moment when we are just beginning to step out into the world, out of our houses and out into a larger sphere. And there's gonna be some need, some, uh, some requirement for us to remember not only who we are, but also to remember how to be in community together. How to remember that we're part of this greater web, the web of all living beings. So take a moment if you can to feel the earth beneath wherever you are, sending a taproot down, grounding into the place where you are, the time, this time, this particular moment in time, this particular moment in the story, the evolution of this great web, this living web of all beings. And feel for where your heart is. Maybe there's been a tremendous amount of heartbreak. Maybe there is a, a sense of uh, anxiety about stepping back out into the world a desire not to go back to what was, but to create something new. This is exactly why we're here. And a desire to be connected, be connected. And knowing right now that this is an important moment, it's a transitional moment and we need each other. We need to support each other as we co-create what comes next as we don't do the same thing that we did before. So feel for that sense of potentiality, that sense of uh, possibility that lives in you in this moment. And perhaps also feel all of the people on this call, all of the people that will be on this six month journey together, holding each other in this integration. And to the great mystery, divine creative intelligence that led us to this place. We bow and we ask humbly to be shown in this call, our peace, our desire, our willingness to be in connection. And for this opportunity to be in community and to be in conversation right now, we give thanks. Blessed be. Thank you, Suzanne, for grounding us. So hi, everybody. I am Hala Khoury, and I've got with me Sean Korn, Suzanne Sterling. We also have on our call our executive director, Anita Akavan, and we have Ardab Alves on, who's one of our faculty members. 
And you might see other faculty owned, oh, right? Kel Jordan is here, one of our mentors. So we Laura, are here. Laura, huh? Laura Sharkey's here too. Is Laura here? Oh, I didn't see Laura. Laura's here. They're not on my screen, so I didn't see them. Um, hi, Laura. Um, so our, our plan for today is to just spend the first few minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes, giving you an overview of our reemergence program. Um, and, and hopefully our mentors and faculty also can like weave in a little bit about what brings them here and then go into a QA. and a um, If you can only be on a few minutes and you're not sure you'll get your question and feel free to type it into the chat so we can have it there and you can listen to the recording in case you know, again, you have a limited time that you can be here, um, but we do want to make a lot of space for questions, but we also thought it'd be good to talk about the program. So I wanted to start by saying, you know, as Suzanne said, this is, this is really a dream of ours. And, you know, off the mat, as some of you know, we've been doing leadership trainings for over a decade and in the last few years have really built out our online programming. You know, thanks a lot to Anita and her amazing relationship building and skill building and really knowing what programs and faculty to bring in. And that's been really rich. And one of the things that is motivating us to offer this different format, which is instead of offering these discrete trainings, to offer something that goes over six months was reflecting on, you know, during COVID, there's so much has been translated online and that's been so exciting. And there's been a lot of really high quality trainings online, a lot of not so high quality trainings online. Um, and I know from my own experience, I signed up for a lot of those trainings and then I like, don't do them or it's too much, right? So we started to think about how can we create something that folks can adapt to their own schedule um, if they want to dive in deep, they can. If they just want it to be a light touch, they can. And so the motivation behind creating something that was three and a half hours a week over six months was, and, and Suzanne was saying this word, is something that you can integrate into your life, that it just can be a touchstone that's consistent. One of the things that I know about change is that change happens slowly over time. It's not this one big thing we do and then our life changes forever. Oftentimes that one big thing needs follow-up. So what we're envisioning with this training is that it can support the big trainings you're doing, right? You might be doing a training that's really inspiring you, but once it's over, you don't have the consistency and support to keep thinking about and visioning and uh, relating around the ideas. So for some of you, you might be in more intensive trainings, and you're using this format that every week there's a practice, there's a reflection, there's a lecture. It's not overwhelming, but it keeps you awake, right? It keeps you awake. Um, I mean, I know I'm excited to take the training, even though I'm leading parts of it, right? Um, secretly, like a lot of us crafted this because we want to actually take the training ourselves. Um, so the training is built around the arc and the methodology of you know, what we often call the off the map methodology, which we didn't make up, right? It's pulled from so many different lineages, but it's really this journey of inside out transformation. And the first couple of months are about embodiment. Like what does it mean to be embodied? Um, what's present for you right now? How do we use our practice to practice self-care, self-accountability, self-exploration, right? The middle part of the training is relational. How are we using our practice to communicate clearly, to express ourselves, to be in conscious relationship? And the third part of the training is about our work in the world. What is our place in the movement towards justice and liberation? What does that look like? Um, and you know, what I really love is that the faculty that we've brought in you know, there is not one universal way to be on this journey. We all have different bodies, different minds, different social locations, different ways that our purpose expresses ourselves. Some of our purpose is full on self care, taking care of ourselves because the world isn't caring for us. Some of our purpose is very out there. So, what I'm really proud about is that we have brought in a tapestry of voices to hold this space. So, we are not here to share one dogmatic way of being. We are here, hopefully, to plant seeds in each of you, give information that you then translate into your own particular purpose, your own particular awakening, whatever you're needing. We also know that 
in these COVID times, this is a particularly tumultuous time in COVID. It's not necessarily 100% lockdown. It's not necessarily 100% open. And what we've noticed is a lot of people are confronting feelings that they've had over the last 18 months that need to be processed. You know, we don't want to move. And then a lot of people are eager to act, you know, feeling like I have been so limited in these last couple of years. I want to do something. But one of the things that we really know is that if we act too quickly, we can either do harm, we can be unsustainable, and we're going to be less effective. That our action has to be grounded in a self-awareness, a critical self-awareness, and in an accountability. So part of what this training is about is giving you community support to this journey and space to reflect. Um, the training is structured so that you can enter it in many ways. Some of you are like, sign me up for six months right now. I want to be in a mentor group. I want to go deep, right? So the, the sort of the fullest way to go into it, if that's available to you and accessible to you and what you need, would be sign up for all six months, Find a mentor group so that you are being held in a small community of accountability and support. If you join a mentor group, and we have several mentors on here, you will meet with that group weekly in addition to the program to process, to relate around the information with each other. I know for me, and I think for many people, if we are not relating around what we're learning, it can be fleeting. If we're not talking about it with others, chewing on it, processing it with others. So the mentor, the mentor route is the one where you're like, I want to be held accountable every week and I want support and I want to build community, right? Some of you might feel like you don't need the mentorship program. Maybe you have a community you can create on your own or you're going to do it self-paced. You know that your life is such that you might not get through everything every week. So you're going to be listening to the recordings. Um, the, the deadline to sign up for mentorship is next Wednesday though. So we do, I'm so happy that we have some mentors on here to talk about that because we really wanna encourage folks who can to do this with a mentor. Um, one of our grassroots program off the mat is um, yoga in action. And these are small circles of 12 people or less who go through a curriculum together. And what we know through our research, what we know through the organizers who trained us up is that the most impactful way to transform and change and act is to be in a small circle of support. And that small circle cares for you, holds you accountable, um, is a place where you can be fed. And so the mentor group is, is a really, is, is a cornerstone of what we do here at Off the Mat. So I think I'm gonna pause here and pass the mic over to Sean to hear from you a little bit about what's exciting to you and what you wanna share with folks about the program. Sure, thank you, Hala. Um, Ronnie, first, I just have to acknowledge those headset earphone things <laughs> going on. I'm fairly obsessed <laughs> with that. It's just the cutest. Um, you know, this was, uh, this was an intense time for all of us in different ways. And, you know, everyone struggled, uh, just depending on where they were at in their own life, whether it was with financing, with parenting, with anxiety, with the fear of the future, fear for their own life, deep, deep grief, trying to learn how to manage this unexpected state of emergency that we were all in um, collectively, but in different ways, just depending on our, on our life and you know, our access to resource but it was a lot and to survive this, which we have, we've had to sometimes process and sometimes suppress. Um, sometimes just take it like, you know what, I'll deal with this tomorrow because I got to figure out how to homeschool my kid today. And now that we are beginning to shift and emerge, it is vitally important that we don't just survive again and maintain that suppressed energy as we move forward. It's, um, it's a behavior that many of us are very accustomed to. We're often raised to survive, you know, to find that resiliency. And this for me is an opportunity not to replicate old patterns, patterns that perhaps worked at a time, but now that we've been in this moment, we recognize they never worked. It was never sustainable. 
that um, our identity perhaps was, was dependent upon things that we valued that many of us see really didn't have any roots to them. And uh, the commitment I have to myself is that I am not going to forget that the last year and a half happened. I'm not gonna just orient into my new life, my new world, bringing with me those old attitudes and behaviors, both on an individual level and on a collective level. But one of the things that I definitely recognize during this time is that it requires community because I will lie to myself, I will bullshit myself, I will fall into old behaviors because it lives in my body. And unless that I have community reflection, support, I know I will fall into suppressing the overwhelm and just finding those things that worked before um, and just pretending like this didn't happen. And that can't work. It can't work individually. It's what got us in this, that, that, that collective denial, that collective ignorance is what got us into this problem in the first place. So what I am excited about in this offering, it's very reflective of the, the personal growth uh, of I think myself, Suzanne and Hala is the recognition of, of community of listening to different voices who have a, a, a different lived experience to challenge ourselves intimately, not to rely on uh, privileges and access um, because we can, and to expand our grasp of who is in this world with us, what's their lived experience, and how can we all grow together sharing resources and ideas and platforms and attitudes and ideology. And this program is very reflective of that personal growth because there's so many people involved who are going to be sharing the richness of their own lived experience and the tools that have helped to support and to sustain them. And I personally intend to grab every piece of brilliant wisdom and information so that it can transform the habits that I have based on my own culture and, and ancestry and all that stuff that, sh that orients me into habits. And the faculty, the experts that are a part of this, the work that we get to do, and to Hala's point, I intend to be a part of this as a student, not just as a facilitator, because I want a reminder every single week of what's possible. I want a reminder in community of the ways in which I fall back into old habits. I want to be making sure that as we move into this new normal, that I'm aware of the addictive patterns that I have, that I'm aware of my suppression, and that I'm grabbing unique tools so that I can shift some of these habits within my own body. And I hope it's an invitation for all of you to not miss this moment that we have to move back into the world inspired, angry, but not angry as, a, um, as, a, a, as an energy that contracts, angry as an, as an energy that motivates us, that that anger can only inspire action once we process the collective grief that is underneath that anger that can genuinely move us towards true healing, integration, and I hope for the sake of mankind, peace. So it requires all of us to do this inner work, to not miss this moment, to work together in relationship, to share lived experiences, to feel the depth of our feelings, to find a safe space, to rage, to cry, to express, to share, to laugh at the absurdity of all of this, um, and to be equally inspired to go back out into your own family and community and change the paradigms that we have fallen into that clearly have not been working. Um, so that's why I'm excited about this program. Um, Holly gave the logistics and you can find the rest of the information online. Um, it's all there for you that spells out exactly what's gonna happen each week, who the mentors are, why the mentorship is important, 
the ways in which you can either be with us live or utilize these practices on a timeline that works for you. Like, you know, when you're cooking food and feeding your family, you got it on your pink kitten headset. Um, and just um, finding a way to not be one more burden, one more thing you have to do, but one more thing that we get to do together to help prepare for this next moment in time. So that's what I want to say about it. So let's reemerge, let's reinvent, let's reimagine, let's reconnect, let's rebuild, and let's uh, remember why we do this work and who benefits from this work, both individually and collectively. Oh my gosh, on that last line, I swear, if you could, weren't a yoga teacher, you would be a marketing expert. That was so beautiful. I'm so glad that was recorded. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you, that was so good. Uh, so Suzanne, we'd love to hear from you. And then we're going to hear from our mentors and then we will go into our Q&A. Suzanne, anything you want to add about the program, what you're excited about, things you think folks we should know? I know we said a lot, so hope it's so much was there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I too will be taking the course um, because this has been a dream of off the mats for a long time. We have our week long and every time we teach our week long intensive, we always say, what if we could expand this? What if we could bring in more of the community of, of experts and faculty that we love so much? And this is actually that dream come true, um, to hear from those voices. And I, I think one of the things that's really exciting for me is that it's a, a, a critical thinking process it's a trauma-informed body embodiment process. It's, um, it, it's a, a process that questions our assumptions. And it's also a process that is embedded in a foundation of connective ritual. And to me, that's a really important piece, like to do this work of critical thinking, to do this work of social justice, to do this work of, uh, of, of, of really examining ourselves, the deep self-inquiry, in context of our place in the movement with a spiritual foundation, one that is um, that, that acknowledges our interdependence, um, one that, that, that allows us to um, really invite and invoke mystery and, and, and magic and the, the, the deep practices that are in, in ourselves, but that in modern culture, we don't often get a chance to um, experience anymore. Like, and, and for me, as an, as an expressive artist, also the other thing that really excites me, and I know RW, you're, you're doing a piece about this too, is creativity. How our deep creativity is going, to, we, we need permission to be creative, we need permission to be expressive. That's going to be part of actually being evolutionary, right? We, we must tap into the imagination necessary to really do this work um, it, from that connective place, remembering the practices that um, that are so much a part of us, and then also inventing uh, different ways to do them that are inclusive, that are that do include a critical lens. Hmm. So joy. That's all I got. <laughs> I was hoping you would say that. You always come and remind us to be joyful along the process. Thank you, Suzanne. So I would love to pass the mic. Ardub, I'm going to start with you because you're also teaching the program and a mentor. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about anything you want to say, but also what you're bringing and a little bit about the mentor group that you're leading? Oh, I don't know that you can unmute yourself. Okay, where'd you go? Oh, let's see. Ask to unmute. There we go. Yes, um, I am seeing Laura's hand. Laura, did you want to talk before I talk? Um, because I'm seeing your hand up. You're unmuted. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, no, Ardub, I was just doing that so that Hala would know I was available to speak at some time. But um, go ahead and, and okay. yeah, you're more articulate than me. So go, you start us off. <laughs> I think we articulate in different ways and that it's a beautiful weaving together. Um, yeah, so I'm Ardab Alves. I use the pronouns she, her, and they, them. Um, I am both teaching on the program. So I'm teaching uh, a week earlier on uh, that's around radical embodiment. Um, I'm really passionate about um, having conversations and doing embodied practice around what does it look like to care for, to be in, um, to uh, 
to really be embodied in our bodies, particularly in bodies that have been told that we are wrong, that we're not okay, that we're too large or too old or disabled or neuroatypical, whatever the, whatever the labels are, whatever the experiences of difference are. Um, and I really wanted to make sure in this program that um, that that was represented early on, right? That it's not a like add on at the end, like, oh, and other bodies, right? It's not just like all thin, white, able-bodied and then extra, right? That we're really talking about for all bodies, um, all shapes and sizes and um, mobilities and configurations of bodies. What does it mean to, to be in our bodies, to care for our bodies, um, to do these mind-body practices in bodies that have been um, marginalized in different ways by the dominant systems, by the culture at large? Um, and what does it mean to find joy and find pleasure and find celebration in bodies that have been marginalized? Um, so that's the, the first part that I'm doing that I'm really excited about. And then Suzanne referenced, um, I'm teaching another week uh, closer to the end of the program, playing with what does it mean to lean into um, desire, lean into pleasure as ways of imagining towards a future, a transformed future individually and collectively. Um, I've been really excited lately. I think, I think especially because of right the last you know, year and some change that we've been through um, to, to really think about what does it look like to imagine forward and how do we support ourselves in that radical imagination um, as we move into this re-emergence, um, whatever that looks like, how can we do that in ways that are individually transformed, that are collectively transformed, and that are really guided by our like highest, deepest, most radical and amazing imaginations for what the world could be and how we want to live in the world, how we want to be and show up with ourselves and with each other. Um, so obviously I could talk for so much longer, but um, so I'm doing those pieces. And then I'm also with Laura, who's also on this call, um, running a mentor group that's, um, it's called the Anti-Conformity Body Mind Club. Um, and we're focusing on bodies and minds that don't fit into the dominant standard uh, paradigm. So larger bodies, uh, disabled bodies, um, folks who identify as fat, folks who identify as mad, folks who identify as neurodiverse, um, any, any body or mind that's been marginalized or that's been made to feel other by this culture, um, and how do we incorporate and integrate these practices, um, these explorations um, in our bodies, um, and how do, we, um, how do we dismantle some of those things when they come up, right, ableism, fat phobia, sizeism, when they come up in yoga and wellness spaces. So really creating a, a space of support for that. Um, and I'm so excited about the mentor groups because I've been running trauma-informed yoga mentorship groups over the course of the pandemic, uh, but they're six weeks long. And so I find that every time we get to the sixth week and everyone like loves each other and is so excited to have conversation and we've built this community and then it's over. And I'm so excited to have a mentorship experience that's longer where we really get to dive in and create community and integrate and process and support each other together. So yeah, I'm really excited about this program. I am also super excited to take this program. I'm definitely gonna use it as my own kind of integration and reemergence and reimagining process. And I'm excited to, to engage in that with all of y'all. And I think with that, I'll turn it over to Laura because I know you wanted to talk too. Thank you, Arda. Yeah, Laura, and then we'll go to Raquel after that, and we'll go to Q&A. Um, yes, thank you uh, for that introduction, Arda. And um, I'm honored and just a tad bit um, intimidated because I love Arda so much and think she's just amazing to be partnering with her to, um, to, to mentor, uh, to, to, to hold the space for the mentor group for the Anti-Conformity Mind-Body Club. And where I'm coming from with this is uh, I work for Off the Mat. And over the past year, I've segued from uh, being an IT person to focusing more on um, disability justice and accessibility. And that's something that we're really working at as an organization to expand um, awareness and support of, um, especially in yoga spaces. And um, it's a rough ride, it really is. And uh, being somebody who is multiply disabled, both physically and 
cognitively. Um, I'm autistic, I'm fat, I'm chronically ill, um, I'm chronically depressed, and, um, and, and I'm getting old. <laughs> and those are all things that, uh, that, that, that really dovetail together, but also um, are all kind of under that umbrella of anti-conformity, being in a body and a mind that this culture just doesn't acknowledge and doesn't see as normal or, or um, up, to, up to snuff, basically. And so, uh, especially talking about, um, as everybody has so far who's spoken, who's, um, anything we do going forward, especially in this next six months here, is going to be highly informed by what we've gone through in the past year and a half with the pandemic. And I know for myself, and I suspect for most disabled people, um, that experience and the potential for growth and transformation that will come out of it and the pain and anguish and everything else that may have come from it, it's going to be significantly different for me than it is for any able person. And that's not to say that there aren't difficulties for able people. Um, and it's not saying I'm not, I'm not trying to say it's any more difficult for me, but just that the difficulties and the joys and potential for that are going to be significantly different. And so um, one of the things that I hope to, to bring to this, to this mentorship group is um, not just around the pandemic in general, but that's a kind of a good example of all this, uh, just a, an awareness of how this movement is fairly young and it's um, even people who are really immersed in social justice work and really conscious about a lot of forms of oppression aren't necessarily very knowledgeable about what it's, what it's, what the challenge is for people who are in bodies and minds that are not considered normal by this culture. And so there's a lot of work we have to do and a lot of support we need and a lot of community we need to build together to, to make this space something that, that, that is even intelligible to us and that makes us visible to the, the, the abled world. And um, so that's, Kind of where I'm coming from with that, and I'm not sure how uh, articulate I was with that. But that if anybody awesome. has any questions, just uh, oh, and just a quick add-on too. If you have any questions specifically about this mentor group or about, um, in general, ableism, disability justice, or accessibility based on um, ability or mind-body um, conformity, you can email. Um, accessibility at off the mat into the world dot org, and I will um, I, I will see those me those messages immediately, and can also um, pull in R dub if necessary um, for for any answers that that people might need. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank, Thank you, you. Honey. Um, so so in addition to these groups, where we have, I'm going to give the mic to Raquel in a moment, who's offering are not a particular affinity space for the mentor group, but a mixed identity space. I also wanted to name that we have a BIPOC group. We have a group for queer folks and Rachel just got on and she can talk about that. We have a group for white people who wanna to be together also processing from the lens of whiteness and privilege. Um, are those all the groups? I know we have a group for yoga and action leaders. So um, Raquel, why don't you talk, just introduce yourself briefly and talk about your group. And I know folks are eager to ask questions. Um, yes, and then Rachel, you will go next. So Raquel, go ahead, honey. Oh, Rachel, though, were you saying you have to go now? Sorry, Raquel, Rachel is only on for a moment. If you don't mind, I'm gonna let Rachel speak before she has to go. Hi, Rachel, just give us a brief intro. It doesn't have to be long and tell us about your group. Thank you so much. Um, popping in between therapy clients, I'm recalibrating and I'm like, my group, my group. Okay. Yes. Cultivating queer community um, is the group um, that I will be helping support. 
And basically, it's for anyone who identifies as queer um, and wants to be able to kind of look at this training through that lens a little bit more as really embodying the training in your queerness regardless because you will be showing up as yourself. Um, I know for myself, it felt like, sorry, internet's a little funky today. We're having a huge storm. Um, can you still hear me? We can hear you. You're frozen, but we still hear you clearly. So thank you. Just having a main thunderstorm. Um, I know for myself going through the training and also being in a support role um, in person, it felt so valuable to have those queer connections just in the group and to be able to be with people on that level. Um, so that is one way that we're gonna just like come together. Um, and really like I, just as I show up as a therapist, I don't like to set any particular expectations until I get to know who's in my group and what they're showing up with. Um, so it, it's very co-created, but still I'm there to support you. Um, and I wanted to thank Laura also. I loved her description and just how she named that if you have additional questions, um, you can always reach out to me personally as well. So I will totally pop my um, email address in the chat if that's helpful, um, or if you wanna like come over to my Instagram and see what I'm all about. Um, I live pretty openly there. Um, you can always- I love your Instagram, get on her Instagram. <laughs> um, thank you. So yeah, just if you have any ways that you wanna check in, beforehand questions, anything like that. I'm always here for that. Um, and really, I'm just excited to be part of this general experience. Um, the one, I think, piece of feedback I ever had was like, I just want this to be longer and more and it now gets to be. So I'm like so excited for everyone here that gets to dive into that. So that's kind of my spiel. Um, my in-between everyone spiel. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm just like really excited for what's to come. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much for jumping on. Can you type your Instagram into the chat before you go? Totally will. Um, sending you. lots of love to my off the mat family and everyone that's in this call right now. Thank you, honey. Bye-bye. Um, Raquel. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We all love each other so much. I hope you can tell. Like, this is a love fest, too. This is real family. Um, by the way, Rachel, I love your hair. Every time I see you, you have, like, the coolest haircuts. And <laughs> I watch your hair. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Raquel. My pronouns are she and her. And um, I myself have been deeply affected and touched by the off the mat trainings. I'm a trauma informed yoga teacher. I trained with Hala and Kira who are in the program here. And then I went on to do all of off the mats trainings that were available. And I found them to be um, cornerstones to my own inner healing. Um, for somebody and I'm sure everybody on here can relate. Um, for somebody who's intrigued by by the possibilities that we can't see yet, or you know, the things that we want to change when we sense something is wrong. I found that um, doing this program was essential in that I was able to learn ways of self care and community. Um, I learned tools of nonviolent communication and self compassion, and um, and I went in and I did the deeper work of whatever it is I'm out here to change on the outside, I've got to go in first. And that was really the game changer for me um, was to do that inner work. And um, the inner work in that process really gave me a larger bandwidth to hold space for other people who might not think the way I think 
or might have their own histories and, and biases. So I, I highly recommend this program because we're gonna go deeper with six months time. And um, the mentorship group that I'm going to be co-facilitating is the All Identities Welcome group, which really falls under the category of somebody who either identifies with multiple groups and, and doesn't necessarily want to to stick with one type of group, or maybe you're kind of like in this in-between phase and you don't necessarily have an identity um, or label that you gravitate towards or group that you gravitate towards. Um, and I'm excited because in this all identities group, we're gonna have a lot of diversity in the group. We're gonna have people from different backgrounds and ethnicities and body types. And um, Sarah, who's also co-facilitating it with me, we talked about this, about really making this group for you. So it, you will be leading the group. And this is going to be a time where you look forward to at the end of the week. Um, after getting all the information you get, it'll be a place where you can go and kind of integrate uh, the information or ask further questions and have some support in, in your processing as well as um, bringing forth some really great practices of self-care so that this work can be sustainable long-term for you. Um, so that is, that is my, um, my spiel on the, the mentorship program. And I'm also going to say that if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I'll put my email in the chat box. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Raquel. Thank you so much. So you know, the deadline to register for mentorship is next Wednesday, the 30th. So we highly recommend if you want to make sure the groups are limited to 12 or less, that you sign up ASAP for that. Um, so I want to open it up to any questions. You can type your questions in the chat or you can raise your hand and we will unmute you. What questions do you all have? I'm seeing some of you type, so it takes time to get into the chat. All right, Melina, I see your hand up. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> uh, well, my question is because right now I'm part of the revolution with him, uh, with Sean. Uh, so I guess in my mind when I saw the program was like, well, not the difference, but what else could I gain from this program? um that we haven't seen together on the other program mm -hmm. sean you want to answer that hi melina hey. um, <laughs> two, different, two different things my um uh this is hosted by i don't even know how many different voices probably maybe 20 plus teachers um, with different lived experiences. It's looking at both the individual work as well as the collective work. It's dealing with themes that I'm not gonna be dealing with. Um, Revolution Within is very different. It's not a training, it's deep personal work. And it definitely supports you know, people as we begin to reemerge, but it's only me holding that space. And it's uh, catering to, um, providing inside out tools that are related to the traditions of yoga and how to bring it into the 21st century as we move forward. This uh, is, it's a completely different, uh, one is a training, one is an immersion, one is, uh, has a, 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 a deep uh, facilitation process that's supporting our next steps. And mine is just set up differently. It's just not a training. It's just a different thing. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I have a, whether Jackie here is saying that I would love to be part of the mentorship program, but I can't be available for any of the times. Fridays in particular is a day I can't commit to. You know, maybe one thing we can do is make a list and if there is a critical mass of folks who need another time we have whether it's one of our existing mentors or other people in our community we could maybe try to organize that i don't know if we've gotten a lot of inquiries so i don't know anita like we want to just take a list and if there's 10 people who need a thursday group maybe we can try to make that happen um 
I just know that those are the times that the mentors are available. Laura, did you raise your hand again or is your hand still raised? I didn't know. I wanna make sure. Okay, excellent. It just, it just told me you have your hand up and I didn't know if it happened again. Um, is the mentorship program gonna be recognized by Yoga Alliance? That's a great question. Um, Anita, you're saying no. At the moment, no, it's not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the times are tricky. Yeah. And we knew, you know, we had to set a time and see who could join that time. So, yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Well, Unless anybody has anything to add, we might be complete here. Um, let's see. Yeah, Arda was saying that if the mentors are Yoga Alliance certified, we probably could count it. Um, and I know for some people that might be important to make that investment, but Anita, I don't want to cause any <laughs> logistical. I mean, yeah. we can definitely, I've contacted Yoga Alliance and, you know, we can definitely look into it deeper because like our dub, you know, every time our dub hosts a course with us, there are a number of um, uh, credits that are applicable through Yoga Alliance. So, I mean, definitely in terms of, you know, Jacoby and Crystal and just see what they're doing and what could be mm -hmm. applicable. I'm more yeah. than happy to research that and get back to everyone. Excellent. All right. I see a hand from Megan. Oh, and then Cara, I see your hand after that. Okay. Hi, I'm going to apologize because I feel like these answers are probably on the website and I didn't do my homework, but... <laughs> The, the um, are there two programs, one for reemergence and then one to become a mentor? And does one cost something and the other one doesn't? Or is there just a difference in price? There's an additional fee to join a mentor group. Um, I don't know what it is, but. Yeah. So should I jump in? Yeah. Um, so the, so the reemergence course itself is $550 where it's, 26 weeks, three courses a week. And financially that breaks down to about $8 per session. Um, we do have payment plans for the full course. And then we also have um, some discount and scholarship opportunities. If you want to email community at offthematintotheworld.org, you'll receive more info on that. In order to participate in the mentorship program, you do need to sign up for the full six months because the, the mentorship is going to be meeting weekly. That will not be recorded where everything else you will be receiving recordings from regularly. But the mentorship groups are more to help you metabolize the information and metabolize it within a community that you identify with or feel most comfortable with to go through the journey together. So that's an additional cost and that is $300 and we do have payment plans and also um, scholarship opportunities for the mentorship as well. And that's just to be in a program with and have mentors not to become a mentor. No, that's to be mentored by one of our six groups. Okay. And you don't have to have a yoga, you don't have to be a yoga teacher. <laughs> no, you do not. You do okay. Not. And I, I have one more question about yoga in action because I don't have any in my state. And I wondered if you guys could, and maybe it's, this isn't the right call or I could just email, but I wondered how to get one in your state. That would be a, a, a different process in terms of depending where your state is. And if you have somebody in your state who's already done our yoga purpose and action training and has become a yoga and action leader from that. So, but we can have a separate conversation about that for sure. But in order to join the yoga and action group for reemergence, you would have to have already participated in yoga in action and purchase that curriculum well in advance from this. 
Um, and I want to acknowledge there was a couple of questions in the chat. Um, maybe we can find a way for, for folks to meet some of the other mentors. Um, uh, you know, maybe I would say send an email if you're curious and maybe we can arrange for the other mentors for you to meet them and maybe we can get them to like pop up a video or say hello. So we'll figure out how to do that. Um, somebody was asking is for the mentor groups, are there going to be breaks for holidays, etc. That will be things that the group will decide together, right? And if you have to miss one or two sessions, we understand you're not going to make 100% of the mentor groups. And, you know, once you're as a group together, you might all look at the schedule and say, hey, look, this week is this, could we change it? We, the group will take on a life of its own and we'll see, you know, you all can make those decisions. But in general, it's important to feel that you can make at least 80%, I think, of the time that's already set, right? Um, and yes, this, this program is for even folks who don't do yoga. I mean, you know, this, we really want this to be accessible to everybody, whether you've a yoga teacher, you've been practicing forever, or you're new to the practice, or you're curious about it. This really is meant to try to capture as many people as possible through this program. All right, Michelle, I see your hand up. Unmute. Yes. Am I, am I yeah. unmuted? We hear okay. you. Well, first of all, I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Sean and Hala and Suzanne. You guys have been my lifeline through this pandemic. I'm doing Revolution Within. I started the trauma-informed teacher training. I did Suzanne's ritual uh, course and um, so many other. I have just been so I'm very excited about this, but I'm a little concerned about doing all of that and adding this. And I'm hoping that it would be kind of a beautiful container and umbrella to kind of weave it all together. And I'm wondering if there's any comment on that. And uh, because I'm concerned to take the leap and then feel totally overwhelmed because I'm already behind on catching up on Revolution Within because I went away for a month and I don't want to miss anything, you know? So that and also as a teacher and a training and doing that, how will this be an agent for helping me in that realm? Because I'm hearing that it's a support group being supportive and I really hear that, but how is it more of a training? Um, could you all speak to that in some way? Are you asking specifically about working in a mentor group or just the over the whole arc? Yeah, the whole arc. Okay. Because okay. I was kind of looking for that. Like I'm doing all this work with all of you. How can I bring it all together in, in, in terms of what I'm doing in my life and in the world? And will it be applicable or mm -hmm. that kind of thing? Yeah. I think the thing I'll say, and then I'll see if Sean and Suzanne have anything to add. I think that what's exciting to me about this training is you're going to be getting bits and pieces and voices that you just have, aren't going to get in the other training because we're bringing in so many different facilitators. So it could be that the consistency just helps you integrate all the other stuff that you're doing or a new seed gets planted. You know, there's something about bringing in 20 plus different voices that you're going to start hearing things in a different way than you've been hearing from the three of us you know, and it might add another level of nuance, it might open a new door, or it might help integrate what you're already doing. I know that I'm participating right now in this three month embodied social justice training. And it's it's having that impact on me. I'm, I'm noticing that because it's a different speaker every week, some speakers are affirming what I'm already doing. So I feel like more committed. And some speakers are revealing things I haven't been investigating that I now realize I need to investigate. So I, as a student, have really appreciated just really having these highly skilled facilitators, either affirming what I know or revealing things I didn't know I didn't know. So I think for somebody like you, who's got a few things you're committed to, that, that would be how I would approach it. I don't know if that resonates, but that's how I've been approaching this other training I'm taking yeah. right, as a student. Thank you. Yeah, does it answer? Yeah. It helped, yes. It, okay. Yeah. And you're gonna be hearing, I mean, you've been studying with the three of us, you're gonna be hearing the folks that have impacted us as well. Like folks that you've heard us reference a little, but going deeper. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Yeah. I don't know, Sean and Suzanne, if you wanna add anything. Well, I, I just wanna add that I think that this, um, the potential for this training, which is, which is, you know, one hour Monday, one hour Wednesday, one hour Friday, basically, 
although the asana practice is a little bit longer, um, is, is a chance to perhaps take all of the information and, 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 and let it land, like let it anchor, let it integrate. So it's, I don't think it's gonna be an overwhelming amount of information. I think it'll be some information, some ways to integrate it. And then the meditation, I think for me is actually one of the most important and maybe exciting parts. The, the just being able to take that one hour a week to integrate maybe all of the things that you're experiencing and learning and taking in. Um, for me, being in community in meditation and being able to integrate in community has been key. So I'm just gonna add that that's the exciting piece for me. Yeah, thank you. I'm seeing a question here, which is a really good one. If, the, for, if you're gonna join the mentor group, do you have to do the other pieces live? No, you can still self pace the lectures and the practices, it just would be important to have done them before the mentor group because the mentor group integrates that information. So you can still do the program self-paced, but then join the mentor group live because everything else will be recorded. And you know, if mentor groups decide they wanna record, they can. If everybody in the group says we would like to record our group, that can be an option, but that will have to be at the decision of every mentor group and everybody's buy-in to do that. Okay. Kat, I'm sorry. I'm remembering you had your hand raised, but the system doesn't keep me flagged. Do you, uh, Car, sorry. Do you still have a question, Car? Hey, thank you. Um, I did just send an email to Anita and it was regarding um, Carrington's group for a uh, yoga in action. Uh, so uh, uh, it was just about whether I needed to, to take another program before I could join that specific mentorship program. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You need to be a yoga in action leader and have gone through that process to do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? I think I've captured everything in the chat. Any other questions? Ardo, I'm trying to channel you and just be quiet and give people time to raise their hand or talk. Okay. All right, well, let's see here. So you have to be a yoga in action teacher to join the mentor group that is for specifically yoga in action leaders. So you can, you, anybody can do reemergence, but we have a special group for our yoga in action leaders who are gonna take their own group. They are becoming mentors in their communities. Um, and then we wanna offer them support. So slightly different group supporting yoga in action. And if you don't know much about yoga in action, this will be a very confusing comment. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, if we can't make the mentorship group, is there space within reemergence for discussion? Absolutely. So the Friday spe session specifically is meant to end with 20 or 30 minutes of Q&A and discussion. The Monday session has a little short point, but the lectures take up most of the time. Although um, facilitators all have different styles, you'll be able to comment. But Friday is specifically meant to open it up to Q&A. So you will still have opportunities to interact. Yeah. And also the way Teachable is set up, right? The teach, like the format where you have all your information and you need to tell me if I'm wrong, that you can comment, you know, there's, it's almost like being in a Facebook page together. So, you know, every week you'll have your page on Teachable where you can still be adding comments or questions or sharing resources with each other. So that's another way to be interactive around it. Yeah. Yeah. These are great questions. Thank you, everybody. See, when I'm quiet for extra long, things emerge. Thank you, Arda. <laughs> We're gonna pause again and see if there's any other questions. <laughs>
All right, and it is the hour, and I know I have to go teach a yoga class. Oh, Arda, go ahead. I just wanted to say that I'm so excited just based on this conversation and people's questions and like the engagement. I'm so excited to go on this journey together. So I just wanted to say that like I am I am personally as a human, as a student and as a teacher really excited to to do this together um, and to, to reimagine what reemergence looks like. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Me too. Thank you. All right. All right. So anybody have anything they want to say by way of closing or any other questions? All right. So thank you, everybody. If you do have any other questions emerge, you can email us. Um, we hope you join us. We're so excited about this. Um, and please be well. Take care of yourselves. Thank you all so much. Just sending you all so much love. Stay well and healthy. And we look forward to sharing this time with you, whether with reemergence or in whatever we do with Off the Mat down the road. Um, please check out the website and check out the other facilitators that are a part of this program. And they're just amazing. So whether you're a part of reemergence or you take their individual workshops at some point, um, please. Uh, I, I think that the people that were in association are really quite extraordinary and I feel really blessed and we want to share their brilliance and their work with you because I know that it will impact you going forward and I hope help all of us to really grow and mature so thank you thank you very much for coming on today and just wish you so much happiness thanks everybody and thank you for all the faculty and mentors who jumped in bye everybody